Hi guys, welcome back to my channel where today I want to talk to you for just a short time about dark, deep, dramatic, black-based smoky eyes. I think that this is the most sultry version of a smoky eye and I've been trying for ages to be able to do one decently. I've tried several different techniques, building light to dark, building dark to light. I finally landed on something that seems to work for me, so if you want to hear about any of that, then don't go anywhere. If you've never been here before, hello, my name is Rachel and I'm a homeschooling stay-at-home mom. I really enjoy playing with colorful eyeshadow and I upload multiple videos every week. They're all eyeshadow related. So if you like what you see and you want to see more, remember to like and subscribe before you leave and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss new uploads. Now let's get going. Let me quickly tell you what I'm wearing. I have the Dark Fantasy palette from Beauty Bite. I only used three of the shadows in this palette. This one, this one, and this one. Now, I will say, today's eye look was actually a tutorial that Aniela Kanikvist did, and it is to her that I credit learning how to do this version of a smoky eye and finally getting the result that I'm looking for. And then on top of the last shadow, I added this liner from NYX. It's Liquid Crystal Body Liner in the shade Crystal Silk. I don't know if these are still being produced or not. I found this secondhand. I would like everything that I'm wearing down below in the description box because I actually filmed this tutorial for a reel. So I'm going to also link Angelica's tutorial and the reel that I made doing this look. I have tried multiple different ways to achieve this kind of a dramatic smoky eye. I've tried building light to dark and dark to light and it took about four different technique attempts until I watched Angie's video and saw how she did this and I was like, that might work for me. And I tried it once with a purple look, which I can link above for you. And then I tried it again today with the same exact colors that Angie used and I love the results. So I wanna talk just quickly, this is not gonna be a long video, about what those different techniques were, what the problems that I kept having were, and how this one seems to solve those problems. I'm also gonna show you the reel that I used to do this eye look in case it's not live by the time this video goes up. This is part of my pre-filming for when baby comes, so I'm not sure exactly when this is going live. But anyway, I will show you the reel in segments in this video to talk through what I'm doing. But let me first talk about the things that I've tried in the past. I I think the first time I tried doing a smoky eye, I started at the lowest part of the lashes with a black, and then I built it up progressively lighter and lighter from there. And the problem that I had was there was this strange disconnect between the black shadow and any other shade that went above it. Perhaps I wasn't using a deep enough grade, but I, I just found that it would just get these super dark colors everywhere with no buffing out tones. Nothing was working and I would have that disconnect often in the crease, but wherever the black shadow stopped and I couldn't seem to get it to blend seamlessly into the next lightest color. The next thing that I tried was to do a very light transition color up high and blend progressively darker downwards. And I had kind of the same result where, yeah, it looked good with all the gradients, but once I got to the black, there was this big disconnect and I wasn't able to bridge the gap. Even if I used a super dark brown or purple or blue or whatever shadow I was using, I couldn't seem to blend it into the black. It was so frustrating because if I was looking head on, it was fine. But as soon as I closed my eyes, you saw this line where the black stopped, wherever it was, if it was in the crease, which is more common because I have hooded eyes, or if it was a little bit lower, depending on where I placed it. And then I would try to overcorrect by blending the black higher upwards until the black was just the entire eye up all the way into like there, it just covered everything. There was no longer any transition, no grade, and it was just black, like you're a raccoon now. And that was so frustrating. I'm like, what am I doing wrong? Everyone else seems to have this figured out. Maybe that's not true. But when I watch tutorials, they're like, it's actually easier than you think. And I just just couldn't seem to get it. The next thing that I tried was to do an all black lid up to the crease, like the whole lid was just black, and then blend it progressively lighter from there. The problem that I encountered with that was first off, there's not much real estate between the top of the crease and the eyebrow. And I don't like my shadows to touch my eyebrow if I can control them, so I didn't really have much to work with. Maybe my brushes weren't small enough, I'm not sure, but I also had the same problem where right at the crease, the black would visibly just stop and then it changed to a new color from there. And no matter how deep that new color was, I just couldn't get them to go together cohesively. There was always a point where you could see black stopped, new color began. And I tried different things. You know, I would use cream for the black. I would use an eyeliner, like put the black on my lid with an eyeliner, and then I might put shadow on top or I might not put shadow on top. It was just, I couldn't seem to get the hang of it. And I wasn't sure where I was going wrong. Maybe my lids were more oily, but then I used a primer. Maybe I didn't have good enough shadows. Maybe I didn't have good enough technique. It was very frustrating. 
Well, one day I watched a video from Aniel Kanikvist. Again, this video that I'm referencing is down below in the description box. She was using this Dark Fantasy palette. That video is what tipped me over the edge to buy the Dark Fantasy palette because I absolutely adored her eye look. This was her eye look, except her glitter on top wasn't gold-based, it was more silver. I don't have a silver one, that's why I didn't use it. But anyway, this was the eye look, and this is why I bought the Dark Fantasy palette, because I thought, oh my goodness. I knew beauty-based shadows, I knew the formula, I knew that my technique and skill level had gotten to the point where I could use them comfortably, so it, that was all fine. But when I watched Angie do a smoky eye, she tried something that I hadn't done before, and what she did was she first took the very deepest, colored shadow that she was going to use and she put it in her entire crease. I'm going to show you guys the reel that I made today doing this eye look. My reels are this new thing I'm doing called music and makeup where I sing a song while doing an eyeshadow look so have a look and see what I did to get the first step done. In another life I would be your girl after that, what Angie did was she took the lightest shade, her transition shade, and she put that on the edge of the darkest mat and she just used it to blend upwards and out. And that was as light as she went, that was as high as she went. When I was doing this, I color switched my brush several times to get off any new product and I just gently worked and blended and built it out so that the transition shade blended into the deepest shade smoothly. And this is what that looked like. We'd keep all our promises, it'd be a against the world. Then she went into the sparkly black. Now you didn't have to use a sparkly black, you could use just a matte black, but she put the sparkly black over all of the naked lid space and then overlapping the bottom of the little cap of color that she'd placed down. So it did cover her whole lid space and it blended into the deepest colored matte that she used. And she just covered everything in the black. So that's what this step is now. In another life. I would make you stay. And as you can see, this is good enough. If you're going for a, a smoky eye or even a matte smoky eye, if you didn't use a black with shimmer, that look was absolutely good enough. But then what Angie did was she took her little, uh, I think she had the OPV glitter liners. I used NYX and she put that on the lid space. Just adds another level of sparkle and interest. And hers was silver and mine is gold because that's what I have. But that's what this is. So I don't have to say you were the one that got away. The one that got away. Et voila! This is the result of just four simple steps, and believe me, they were really simple. Now, Beauty Bay shadows are extremely pigmented and good. I really like Beauty Bay shadows, and this palette offered some great options for doing this kind of smoky eye, because you could also use the dark purples or the dark browns. It's great, but all of it comes down to the technique, and this was a technique that I hadn't tried before, starting with the deepest crease, blending it out a little bit more, and then going all black. And I think part of it was probably my skill level had advanced. I had been trying to do this kind of a smoky eye for ages, months and months and months. I would try it and I would get frustrated and then I would forget about it for a while. And then I would think, yeah, but I really wanna be okay at doing this. So I would try it again, try a different way, new technique, take some people's tips. And it wasn't until I tried this technique that Angelica uses that I finally got the result that I'm looking for when I wanna go super moody and dark and dramatic. This is the eye look I wanted and I think it's just delicious and I love it. But it, I, I really didn't get here until I watched Angelica's video. And what I am not seeing, and this is the most exciting point, what I'm not seeing is the disconnect between the black and any other shadows around it. There is no line between where the black ends, which in this case happens in the crease area, and where the colorful mattes begin. And perhaps that's a matter of the shadow quality or the shadow depth. Perhaps I just wasn't using dark enough shadows. Maybe I was trying to get this kind of result, but my shadows didn't go deep enough. I'm not really sure. But I wanted to talk to you guys about this journey and the process because I really have been trying to achieve this sort of eye look for almost all of my eyeshadow journey. And I'm, what, almost two years in, I finally got there. I feel like this is now what I've been wanting. And I'm, I'm sure that there's room for improvement. You're never gonna be perfect, but this is the best that I've achieved so far. And I hope that that video was a little bit helpful to you. Maybe if you like this kind of eye look, you could try it yourself with what you have in your collection. I'm never gonna say go out and buy a specific palette. I definitely recommend you shop your stash. If you have a really good black and one super deep pigmented colored shade, you can achieve this because then you simply need a buffing out shade and you're good to go. So pretty, so moody and dramatic and a little sultry and I am here for it. I think it's lovely. I'm super excited and you can tell that I've got this high energy because when I saw the result of this eye look, I was like, oh, 
I need to film another video. <laughs> it was just too pretty not to share. Thank you so much for being with me. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you like this eye look. Remember that I do make Instagram reels. It's easier and takes less time for me to make that kind of a tutorial. And I'm trying to incorporate them more into um, my Instagram account. Although I'm also bringing them over into YouTube shorts. So if you're not on Instagram, you can find the same videos there on my YouTube shorts. Anyway, remember to subscribe before you leave. Don't forget. I hope you guys like the video and I will see you guys again next time. Bye.